Do you eat fast food? Once in a while. Yeah? Once in a while. How, how often? Uh, I'd say probably once every two weeks. Oh, three, four times a week, maybe? Uh, in France, yes. Yeah. But here, not. No. I don't like here. It doesn't sound very um, clean. And uh, what's your favorite place? Uh, probably Wendy's. McDo. Taco Bell. <laughs> Taco Bell. McDonald's is pretty close. Do you ever have a supersized Cokes? Uh, no. no. Uh, in France, uh, the, the small size here, it's a bigger size in France. Even the small size here, I can't drink. To this epidemic. In 2000, Dr. David Satcher became the first Surgeon General to draw attention to the obesity crisis, declaring it a national epidemic. Now, now remember, we're supersizing everything. Uh, you go to any place to buy, go to any fast food store, and they're trained to tell you to buy a bigger size. For five cent more, you can get the supersize. Federal government will define a piece of meat, three ounces of meat, as a sensible portion, and that looks like a deck of cards. Few people would be able to find this deck of cards if they were served a piece of meat, a steak, in a restaurant. It would probably be about four or five times the size. One typical bagel that one is eating that looks something like this is going to comprise five servings of bread. When fast food companies first opened, they generally introduced one size. For example, one size french fries when McDonald's first opened, called fries. That size fries is now called small, medium, large, and super size. That original size is still here. It's got about 200 calories, but the super size is gonna pack in over 600 calories. When Burger King first opened, they had a 12 ounce small and a 16 ounce large. This 12 ounce is now kitty. The 16 ounce is now the small, the medium, the 32 and the 42. And this is across the board with all fast food places. Cars have introduced larger cup holders to accommodate those huge 7-Eleven double gulps, which are 64 ounces, a half gallon, and hold anywhere from six to 800 calories, depending on how much ice you put in. A half gallon of soda. A half gallon of soda for one person, 48 teaspoons of sugar.
secret study by one of the tobacco companies that had the ominous title of something like brand imprinting for later actuation in life. They would buy the, the little toy cigarettes uh, and they'd start play smoking them at four or five or six. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't even notice the pack. I mean, if you asked them what pack it was, they wouldn't notice it. But the theory was that somewhere it's buried in here, and then when they get to the age where they're smoking, without even realizing it, they're going for that pack that they recognize because it had those nice feelings for them when they were little kids. In the same way here, yeah, they're, they're satisfied, it's nice, they remember the warm feelings of playing and getting the toy, and being with mom and dad, and it's gonna carry through. That's why, when I have kids, every time I drive by a fast food restaurant, I'm gonna punch my kid in the face. <laughs> <laughs> then he'll never, will never want to come. I think people do need to exercise more, uh, and not just exercise, because uh, when you think of exercise, it often seems like it's, it's more than you can fit into your very busy day, uh, but you can take small steps. Obesity is not going to be solved th through sheer physical activity. The food industry would like to blame everything on lack of exercise. Eat as much as you want, exercise it off. Go out and buy a bike or play basketball with your kid. We should do that. But that's only part of the battle. And here is why. You have to jog for 15 minutes to burn just one ounce of potato chips. You have to bike for an hour to burn the calories in this soda. And this supersized meal at McDonald's has so many calories, you have to walk for six hours to burn it off. It is hard to see how exercise alone is the solution to obesity.